As we all know, we need a very strong and well-functioning CRPS system in my country. Due to several reasons, this has not been developed. It should have been developed because the people at the ground level, the professionals working in various departments, now are not aware of the fact, the importance of CRPS, which is extremely important. Because of the weak CRPS, I should say, our country's planning went wrong. If we have a very clear cut and very strong and well functioning CRPS system in terms of planning, in terms of resource allocations, in terms of even EPI program, yeah, and if we know the cause of death very clearly, we can realign our programs in terms of which disease has to be given priority, etc. etc. Our most important category of workers from our side is basic health service worker. The midwife, patients one, two, assistant, daily health visitors, township health nurse, or whatever, etc., etc. So when we look at the CRVS, I saw from two perspectives. One perspective is from the provider or recipient side, which is us, a CSO, MOHS, us. But another perspective is customer side, which is population. It appears to me customer side is far more important than recipient for our side. So these customers, they must be properly literate in terms of importance of CRBS, especially in remote, underserved, hard to be reach area. They may have no idea at all that birth should be registered, death should be registered. So this is what we are going for. Why we are asking this data from them? They should realize this is very important for the country to develop or establish social welfare activities you know, planning, resource allocation, you know, prioritization of different townships, different states and regions based on cost of death, based on the number of births, etc., etc. This is very important. I would like to uh, inform Dr. Ellen Lopez that we have a program that is going to distribute tablets. Tablet form to all the midwives, pages one, pages two, health assistants. Another category is, this is a 7-inch tablet phone. Another category is 8-inch tablet phone to all the station mail officers and to all the country mail officers, which is about 1,200. Following that, we'll be giving to doctors working in 100 bedded, 150, 200, 500 bed hospital. So tablets which we are going to give to the basic health service worker, they can use this. Everything will be there. We have a standard health message booklet that will be in that tab that they can see offline. Many of the guideline SOPs and some books or whatever produced relevant to basic health or service worker will be there in that tab. There. If I want to relay one message, I can just type it. That message will be distributed to all the midwives. With that tab, there, this CRVS system can also be enhanced or improved a lot. Improved dramatically, I can assure you. you know? On top of that, all our basic health service workers, their public health acumen will also be very high in coming one or two years or three years time. Another one that you are doing is death registry, which is extremely important. And I was informed by Dr. Wamong that 84% of the deaths are occurring in the community, where the cause of death is somewhat not sure. So this cause of death, what you call M MCCOD, whatever, Medical celebration of cause of death that is extremely important for us. Also, only if we know the cause of death, township wise, state and region wise, if possible, village wise, pinpoint when we can align our health programs to tackle that particular disease where the cause of death rate is very high. So, cause of death is extremely important for us. So we know cause of death, but no, behind this cause of death data, many things we can think of it in terms of strategizing. We may even have different strategies for different state and regions, even different strategies for even different townships. So what we need to do is that we need to have a township-wise cause of death, cause of death. Because a group of townships may have a cause of death due to certain factors, certain diseases. Then we can tackle those factors and diseases straight away. By doing this, we can save a lot of our resources instead of having a broad front strategy applying to all over the country. This is not the right way. So we have to use the money where the money is required to be invested. That is very, very important. But we have 50 nursing and midwifery schools. At least 
these upcoming nurses and midwives must be informed about the VF CRVS system, what is the purpose of CRVS, what is the importance, what is the utility of CRVS in these schools. So I think Dr. Tintun, uh, DYDG, he, he can ensure that these are properly reflected in the curriculum of the University of Health. On top of that, another area is we need to reflect these in the, probably, I'm, I'm saying properly reflected, but at least in depth for MBH courses in University of Public Health. They must be worked, because these are the people, after they get the MBH, they are going to work in the state and regional level, so they are the people who are going to monitor, who are going to oversee and supervise all these activities. Once they know this subject very well, they can easily monitor, they can easily give advice to whoever that they are going to do. That is very, very important. No? Because the reason being that I don't want to do capacity building activities, training workshops, hundreds of times, 50, 40, it is not worth it. A lot of money wasted. So once, when they, before they graduate, if they were properly imbibed, I should use the word, imbibed with all these, we do not need to conduct capacity building, building motor for 20 times or so. A few times maybe more than sufficient. Whether it is worth doing it or not, we have to reconsider this. And in this particular context, you know, this CRVS and cause of death, the most important people are basic health service workers rather than the doctors. Why? The doctors are involved in 16% of the death at the hospital. You know? So BHS staff and GAD staff and your staff, especially BHS staff, they should be the one who should uh, write down the cause of death to the extent possible, as much as possible. Here, you know, and then you may be knowing this, you know, we have a, what we call ICD 11 is coming up. In 8 June, the BHO launched this, and then upcoming Wala Assembly in 2019 May, it will be adopted in the, by the member states, 194 member states, and probably it will be starting in 2022. And this, I was told that 50, more than 50,000, approximately 50,000 categories are there. It is much more user-friendly, I was told. On top of the traditional medicine subjects also there. And one interesting is that, you know, the gaming disorder was part of the, under the rubric of addictive disorder, gaming. So I should say, in, in, apart from gaming, we should use Facebook disorder also. <laughs> it is the Facebook which is creating a lot of problems in my country. You know, I, I'm wondering, you know, why these, okay, many deaths are there, you know, we have to alert our people. About number of 84% of deaths are in the community means, you know, we have to do something to get the right cause, right diagnosis, uh, cause of death. You know, that is very important. So that is very, very important. Uh, we have to do something. We need to update the guideline for medical certification of course, so that, that is urgently required. The only, my only advice to you is that please do it as simple as possible, not to be too much complicated. A simple form will yield the information that we are going to ask for that. No? That is very, very important. Since 2016, first April that I took as a minister, I've been emphasizing a lot of data information now, 2018, I concretely mentioned that this is a year of data information and our people are doing all out to make it happen. And also, we will try to have this data culture ingrained in the minds of all our staff. You know, we have tons and tons of data collected at the central level. The analysis part is we, we are not giving feedback. So if we are, because we are giving less feedback, the data collectors, they are not realizing, you know, the importance of the data that they have collected, you know. So if they if they give some sort of feedback that we have used their data for analyzing and interpreting them and feedback to them, you know, they will be more serious about this. This is what we are right now doing this, you know, and also involve them in many of the workshops so that you know, they will be part of the team, you know, the data culture. CRVS is the only way out for our country as well as for many other countries. Any country all over the world, they cannot conduct census within a short period of time. Look at our census, 2014. Previous is what, 82 or 83, 83. 83. 83. 83 to 2014, you know, 31 years. It's very expensive. So in the meantime, for interim measures, CRVS funding is the only way out in terms of getting this, but debt, etc., etc. This is very important. 
And I was also in for my warm up, and I also know this. Many of the SDG indicators are also using as a denominator, mm -hmm. the birth, death, etc., etc. And also, 23 health related indicators are also using many of our vital statistics data information. So, this is very, very important for all of us. I particularly would like to thank Dr. Alan Lopez, who I know him for many years since 1990s or early 2000s where you work in division headquarters, I work in division zero. So I, I just wanted to say a, a, a word in response. Um, how wonderful it is to hear a senior public health figure, the Minister of Health in the country, talk to us not about vaccination programs, not about treatment of cardiovascular disease, but about the fundamental importance of health information systems and particularly data on who is dying of what. And I think we will be energized we will be strongly motivated by those uh, very thoughtful remarks. We all heard, Minister, and we were delighted to hear you repeat several times the importance of the, of, of the task in front of us. This is not just about statistics. These are fundamentally important data for guiding the avoidance of premature mortality, the development of, of uh, programs, uh, social development programs, health programs in this country, the development of the population in this country depends on keeping people alive and healthy well into old age. Yes, there are challenges, but Myanmar has the basis of the system that we can work on. And you've given us many, many points, I think, of, uh, of, en of entry into that system uh, to strengthen that system. And, and, and I'm sure with the collegial basis that we have established with the CSO and uh, the leadership of Wamang, the, the, uh, the Department of Health, Ministry of Health, we have uh, a very, very good basis for a committee like this to define uh, the way forward.